What's up, everybody? Welcome to Nicole's Accountability, or welcome back to Nicole's Accountability. Thank you guys for all being here. Today, we are going to be talking about the very essence of my channel and what it was founded on, and that is my own personal accountability journey and the things that I have went through in my recovery on that journey. So, you guys know I don't know, I don't like to waste any motherfucking time. We're going to get right into the video, so let's do this. So, I want to start out the video by sharing with you guys how important it was for me to learn to take accountability for my actions, okay? For the longest time in my active addiction, I would make excuses. I would make excuses for my own behavior. I would make excuses for other people's behavior. Um, and quite frankly, that shit's just not fucking cool. So when I got sober in 2015, I had lost custody of my son. And I was angry. I was angry at my friend Tara. I was angry at CPS. I was angry at the world because I felt like God and the world had turned on me and I was blaming all the things that were my fault on to other people. My little boy got taken away from me because I was using substances and I should not have been using substances. I was so lucky that my son wasn't taken away from me at birth because when I gave birth to my son, I was under the influence of methamphetamine. But I was so fortunate enough to be given my son and I was able to take my son home after two days of being in the hospital. And for one year, we built a relationship together, me and my little boy. I was able to bond with my son and really, really just love on him and get to know him. And that very grace that I was given by God, me walking home and being sent home with my son, even though I was under the influence when I gave birth, that was grace. Because that very relationship that I was able to build with my son over that year is what saved me and gave me the ability to work my ass off to get him back when he was taken away from me. If I hadn't had that time to build that relationship with my son, and if he had just been taken away from me at birth, I don't know if I would have had the ability to fight like I did. I fought like hell to get my son back, and I take full responsibility for the negative things that I did in my active addiction when I was pregnant with him and after I gave birth. And finding my part in that whole situation when Tara called CPS on me, my part, my wrong, was that I was using drugs when I was a mother and should have been watching over my son. Okay, yes, my best friend wronged me. She hurt me dearly, but I had to find my part in it and me taking responsibility for that part that I played in having my child taken from me was instrumental in my healing journey in recovery and has made me into the woman that I am today sitting before you. Once I got sober, after about one year, I started going through and making amends to the very people that I harmed with my actions during my addiction. And it was some of the hardest things that I've ever done is show my family through my actions that I'm changed and keep my fucking mouth shut. Because I could tell my parents all day long how sorry I was and how ashamed I was and how I wish that I hadn't done the things that I did when I was in active addiction. But they've heard all that before. They've heard all that time and time again. So what I did was I listened, I shut my, my mouth, and I made amends by showing my family that I was a different person, by showing them that I wasn't gonna repeat the same actions over and over and over again. 
In 2018, I started this YouTube channel. And when I started this YouTube channel, I was raised in a recovery family of all or nothing. You either do it or you don't. There's no in between. I came from an abstinence only recovery family that was heavy in 12 steps. And so when I first came onto my platform here on YouTube, I was very rough around the edges. I was very, well, I'm just going to say it. I was black and white. You're either sober or you're not. You're either being honest or you're not. You're either taking accountability or you're not. But every time that I ever made a video or tried to help somebody, it was always from a place of literally caring about saving their life and helping them save their own life. Because we all know I can't save your life, but maybe I can help by bringing tools or resources or helping you make changes that can change and save your own life. So when I first started this recovery journey, sharing it here on um, YouTube, I was really rough around the edges. A lot of people might have referred to me as controlling or loud or, or bossy, but it was always because I was trying to help and I only wanted what was best for other people. I only wanted them to succeed in their recovery, always, every person. And so me taking accountability for my past channel is an important part of my recovery today. And for those of you guys that are new here, this is my second channel. I had a very large channel with 25,000 people. That's a large channel here in the recovery community. And I was so very proud of that channel because it did show me working from being the Nicole who was, it's my way or the highway, this is how recovery is done, to changing into the person I am today. Now, I've always accepted multiple pathways to recovery, but I had an abstinence-based route. So a lot of the practices that I used to put into um that I used to use were 12 step practices. Okay. Since I have learned over time, I have learned that the all or nothing approach when helping people that are struggling with substance use disorder, it doesn't work for a lot of people. So now what I have done is I have changed my whole approach to meeting people where they are at. I have also educated myself on mental health disorders and the need for medication in recovery. Now, I'm on medication assisted treatment, so I've always been a huge advocate for Suboxone and Methadone and Vivitrol and Sublocade. But I used to be very, like I didn't understand how someone could take Adderall if they were an, a meth addict. I didn't understand how somebody could take um, those substances because me, I've always been afraid if I got Adderall for my ADHD that I would abuse it. And so that's why I've always stayed far away from any kind of stimulant medication for my mental health disorders. But over time, since I've been on YouTube, since I've been working for Dr. B, since I have been helping others all across my multiple platforms, I have learned that there are a lot of people who can take these medications just like I take my Suboxone as prescribed. And so coming here, I know all of you guys already know this about me, most of you do, but some of you don't. So I'm, I wanna clear this up. I support all pathways to recovery. I've always been a huge advocate for MAT recovery. Okay, that's my own personal journey that I've taken is MAT recovery with a, um, with a base in 12 step. After I stayed sober for about four years, I started to realize that a lot of the beliefs that I had didn't align with the 12 steps anymore. And so I have since shifted into MARA or MARA, Medication Assisted Recovery Anonymous. And that is the program that I use in my everyday life to stay sober that I work, okay? But still, even today, like I wake up every morning and I make a gratitude list. And that is one of the things that I have done for eight freaking years. Number two, I talk about what I'm going through. I don't bottle anything up inside. I be snitching on my addiction. And that is something that I learned from being an Alcoholics Anonymous and the 12-step fellowship.
Same with the gratitude list. And so these are practices that I have taken from that fellowship and those um, 12 steps. And I have um, used them in my life today in my acceptance of all forms and pathways to recovery. So, you know, if you had found me uh, six years ago when I first started making content on YouTube, um, you would have thought, oh my gosh, she's just another big book thumper 12 step person, right? And, but now I am totally different than that and I'm open to all forms of recovery. But one thing I'm not gonna make excuses for or be open to is people lacking accountability, okay? One of the main things in recovery, in all recovery, no matter what kind of program you work, is honesty. If you can't be honest with yourself, then you can't be honest with anyone else. And so I would be lying to you if I sat here and I said, you know, guys, um, all the things that have been going on recently with uh, everybody talking about the Jessica Kent situation, you know, I'm, I just, I don't even know what's going on. No, I see exactly what's going on. And it's in a lack, it's a lack of accountability. Okay. And so I wanted to come on today and share with you guys how easy it is to take accountability for mistakes that you've made in the past. As you can see, I sat here and shared with you about how I used to be a very black or white person because that's all I was ever taught in Alcoholics Anonymous. It was this way or no way. And many of you guys can relate to my story because many of you guys are coming out of the fog of being taught the only way is abstinence 12-step recovery. All of us basically have been through that because we've all been victims of being recycled through these rehab and treatment centers. And so me coming on here today and telling you, yeah, I used to be very black and white, but it was because that's all I ever knew. So if I didn't know anything else, how could I share anything else? Over the years, I have learned Dr. B has taught me so much about harm reduction, and I can't wait for y'all to see the video we did today. We just got done recording it. It's all about harm reduction and how to help people that maybe don't want to get sober. And um, it's that easy for me to come on here and say, hey guys, yes, I made mistakes in my past. You wouldn't be able to see those mistakes now though because my YouTube channel was deleted. My precious YouTube channel that I spent five years building was deleted because I had a different opinion than someone and that certain someone didn't like it. I'm not going to get off on a tangent about that, but like I've always said, you can't keep me down. So we're starting anew. Taking accountability is crucial. It's important. It has to be done in order to move forward and heal in recovery. I own my mis I, I, I own my shit. I'll say I own my mistakes. I own my mistakes. I own my shit. Okay? I have no problem admitting where I have made mistakes and I have hurt people. But I always make it right because that's what I have been taught. I always try to do the right thing and help somebody no matter what even if, if if it's even if me helping them is taking away from something that I need to do for me I sacrifice to help other people you know so sitting on these platforms and making videos and saying things like it's okay to lie it doesn't take away from a person's story that is not true it is never okay to lie to gain profit from your audience. Sure, if my little boy comes out here and he says, hey mom, uh, don't you love Power Rangers? I don't watch Power Rangers, but you know what? I, sure buddy, I love Power Rangers. What's your, what's your favorite Power Ranger, the blue one? Yeah, me too. That's totally different. But when you have embellished over the years to profit off of your audience, that is wrong. Lying about the amount of time that you did in prison 
is wrong. To seem like you did more time, why? Because you thought it was cool? That's wrong. And there's no way to cut that cookie or that pie any differently, okay? The facts are that being dishonest and building a brand, calling it off of transparency, but doing otherwise is wrong. And people are asking you to be honest about that. And that's as simple as it is, is accountability, taking that accountability, owning that shit, and then rising above and moving forward from it. So, for example, I have taken accountability many times where I have making, make it, made mistakes. And what do I do? I take accountability and I don't repeat the same mistake over and over and over again. I take accountability, I apologize, and I move forward from it. Okay? And that's what I think all these people online are wanting people, are wanting to see with the situation that has blown up into what it is today. Now, this video, I wanted to touch on my own accountability to share that about what I think people are wanting from Jessica. And then I also wanted to share a little bit about the way I was when I first started my YouTube channel, because it's important for you to know that I came from an abstinence-based 12-step um, only uh, sponsorship family, and that's what I was taught for over 10 years. So it took me a couple of years to learn other ways. But since I have learned other ways, as you can see every single day, I'm a huge advocate for mat treatment. I'm a huge advocate for cannabis recovery. I'm a huge advocate for those of you guys that are seeking out different forms of recovery like refuge recovery, smart recovery, Mara, um, 12 step, whatever kind of recovery you want to take, I will help you find the best route to get there. And so I think it's so important for people to understand that in my experience, in my situation, yes, I have made mistakes in the past, but I have taken ownership of those mistakes, taken accountability, not repeated those same mistakes and moved onward and upward. And I think that's all that you guys wanna see in Miss Jessica Kent as well. So I hope that this video um, gave you a little insight onto maybe, you know, what my past was like when I first started on social media and then where I'm at today. And if you have any questions, put them in the comment section below. Love y'all.